Dylan White has given his take on the Cash Ali David Price fight where it ended with a disqualification with Cash Ali taking several bites out of David Price. I mean, he didn't thankfully bite any chunks out of his flesh, but he did sink his teeth into Price a few times during that bout. Now, as we all know, Dylan White is a very candid individual. He speaks his mind. He recently had this interview uh, alongside Tunde Ajaye and Anthony Yard. And just because Anthony Yard is his friend, he wasn't, he didn't feel compelled to just come out and say, oh yeah, Yard knocks out Kovalev and he does it. No, no, no. He was very measured and very circumspect when they asked him about Yard versus Kovalev. He said, look, that's a really tough fight for Anthony Yard. <laughs> so he's a very candid individual even if you're a friend of his you know he'll say you know speak his mind to your face even if he knows it's not what you want to hear that's how he is so with regards to this Cash Ali situation some of you guys might be surprised to learn that he's actually going quite easy on Cash Ali I'm going to quote Dylan White here he says I can't explain to you the pressure and the power that goes into heavyweight boxing. When you've got a guy 19 stone, 6 foot 8, punching you smack in the face, it makes you do crazy stuff sometimes. But to compete at heavyweight, you've got to be a bit crazy anyway, you know? Cash Ali is a good boy. I think the occasion got to him, but these things happen. It's not the first time a fighter has bitten someone. Mike Tyson did it. Derek Chisora did it. Everyone's making a big deal about it. It's not very sportsmanlike but you can't understand the pressure that goes into a heavyweight fighter's mindset on the day. The pressure is immense. Nothing simulates it. You can train, you can have 100 fights, but when the big occasion comes, I've had it before, but managed to hold myself together. Cash is a good guy, quiet guy, family man, peaceful man. But for him to act that way goes to show you the immense pressure. Well, people deal with pressure in different ways. This is obviously me speaking now. The quote is over. People deal with pressure in different ways. Uh, some fighters go into a shell. Some fighters become hyper-aggressive. Some fighters do illegal things. They'll headbutt opponents, bite opponents, hit them low. You know, I covered all of this in my video that I did about the Cash Ali David Price fight and the psychological factors that were at play. But Dylan White is kind of alluding to the fact that he has felt compelled to do illegal things in certain fights. And he's insinuating here that he held it together. He didn't go ahead and go through with the illegal things that he wanted to do. But he felt like doing it. <laughs> because as I talked about in the uh, Cash Ali David Price video, Dylan White is a guy who also comes from the streets. And when you come from the streets you're, and you're about that life, you become accustomed to doing impulsive things, to acting on impulse, having a lack of discipline. This is what you become accustomed to, the fight or flight mentality. And I also mentioned how if you still have a lot of ignorant street people around you, you may end up caring more about what they think about you than what the boxing establishment and the wider public think about you. Now, in Dylan White's case, yeah, he still has some old school guys around him. But, for example, his, uh, his brother... His brother is a guy who, you know, he's, he's definitely old school like that, but he's also a boxing person. You know, he's not somebody who is ignorant about boxing. He's some, someone, and I'm talking about Dean White here, he's someone who knows a hell of a lot about boxing. He's someone who has a mature boxing mind. He's not one of these just little hangers-on like Cash Ali might have around him who are just on a hype. And they don't understand the realities of the sport. So Dylan has good people around him, boxing people around him, people who know what they're talking about, people who understand the realities of the sport and what can happen to anybody. Anyone can get flawed. 
Anyone can get knocked out. It's not the end of the world. But when you've got a bunch of idiots like Cash Ali might have around him, who know nothing about boxing, who are all on a hype, those kind of people can influence your mindset in a negative way, you know, because they're not boxing people. And I'm not saying all of Cash Ali's team were like that, but he certainly had his fair amount of cheerleaders who were like that, who know nothing about boxing. So, yeah, it doesn't surprise me that Dylan White has kind of taken a sympathetic angle with Cash Ali because he is a fighter himself and he's been an impulsive person himself. I mean, we remember in the Anthony Joshua fight at the end of the round where Dylan White swung punches way after the bell. And to be fair, Anthony Joshua, I think, swung a punch after the bell and Dylan White then reacted to it and, you know, went all in. I've seen that happen many times in boxing. <laughs> many times I've seen uh, big fights break out after the end of a round where people jump in the ring. You know, I've seen that many times. But at the time when it happened, there were people, I think maybe even the commentators, I can't remember now, but there were certainly people online suggesting that Dylan White was trying to get himself disqualified at that point. Now, I'm not going to say that he was, but what I can definitely say is that he was being impulsive. That was the street mentality coming out of Dylan White when it came to what he did uh, after the end of round one against AJ. And that was a round where Dylan White got battered. <laughs> Let's not forget that. Round one was a tough round for Dylan White. Um, my interpretation of it was he was so frustrated by the way the first round went and the fact that, you know, AJ kind of landed a punch slightly after the bell he saw an opportunity there to finally get a decent one in. <laughs> to catch AJ off guard at the end of the, of the round because AJ, had, you know, hit him after the bell. Okay, I'm going to retaliate. And this time, unlike during round one, this time I'm actually going to get a good shot in. <laughs> so I think that was what Dylan was thinking during that moment. Again, I'm not in his head, but that was my interpretations uh, of his actions. But yeah, you know, it doesn't surprise me that he's kind of sympathetic to uh, Cash Ali. And he, he, again, he may know Cash Ali personally, but that don't mean that he wouldn't speak the truth about the guy. I mean, he knows Malik Scott personally, but yet when Malik Scott went in there against, uh, who was it now? that uh, Luis Ortiz, Dylan White told him straight, you know, you went out like a, a you know what? You know, he didn't show heart in there. You didn't show fight and spirit. He was very, very candid publicly about what he thought about his friend Malik Scott's performance against Luis Ortiz. He didn't hold nothing back. And he's that kind of guy, all right? But with Cash Ali, he's like, no, actually, you know, it was the wrong thing to do. It's not sportsmanlike, but you don't understand the pressure, you know? Because <laughs> again, he has, he comes from a similar kind of uh, mindset originally, the street mindset. See, that's why there's sympathy there. That's why there's empathy. That's why there's some understanding. So anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. It's happening, I'm out. In fact, hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on. Now, before I go, I just want to give you one last example. <laughs> All right, a random example that I remember. After the Mike Tyson of Vander Holyfield rematch, there was a big, you know, fallout and people were upset with Tyson biting Holyfield and getting himself disqualified and all that. I remember reading an interview with Rakim, who was a famous uh, New York rapper. Particularly at the time, a lot of people declared him as the greatest rapper of all time. He was a very good rapper, Rakim. And I remember reading this interview where Rakim was talking about the Holyfield Tyson rematch. And this might seem incredible to a lot of you guys, and it's still incredible to me. But Rakim came out of his mouth and said he was that he lost a massive amount of respect for Evander Holyfield in that Mike Tyson rematch. <laughs> he, said, he said he lost a massive amount of respect for Holyfield. 
He said that Holyfield reacted like a bitch to having his ear bitten. <laughs> you couldn't make it up, but that's the street mentality that I'm talking about. Huh? <laughs> anyway, I'm out. Join me on Patreon. I upload a minimum of two podcasts every single week, covering a wide variety of controversial topics, as well as live stream Q&A sessions. Take a look on screen right now at some of the podcasts I've produced so far. For just $3 a month, the equivalent of about £2 a month, you get access to all my new podcasts and my entire back catalogue of past podcasts, including my popular Confessions of a Nightclub Bouncer series. You can listen on your computer or on your smartphone or tablet by downloading the Patreon app from the Google Play Store or the App Store for free. The Patreon app also allows you to download each podcast in MP3. For less than the price of a cup of coffee, you get access to dozens of hours of exclusive content. It's easy to sign up, there's no contract, and you can cancel at any time. So come and join our community of free and critical thinkers by signing up with me here on Patreon today.